Friends of the Magic Hour, welcome to another wonderful episode. This afternoon, we have Bard of the Ether and Tristan Ader from the Skyscraper game. Guys, welcome. Thank you for joining the pod. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me, tell me, you know, before we get into the project, I want to know, how did you guys discover Web3 and, um, you know, as a more, I guess, specific way, how did you find magic and Arbitrum and treasure? Yeah, no, good. Good question. It's a, it's a long winding one as well. Uh, that's okay. And yeah, no, I, it's it's, but that's it. That's crypto as well. You know, I think. So mm-hmm. personally, for me, um, twenty seventeen, sort of, you know, the summer of twenty seventeen is definitely where just got my eyeballs into the just the big stuff. You know, Ethereum, obviously, uh, as an investor, and was like, okay. This is pretty mind blowing, you know. Decentralization straight away was just like, okay, this is going to change everything. And mm. you know, frothy mouth, I would be just yammering to everyone, just like, I mean, good God, you couldn't stop me. It just the, the kind of repercussions it's going to have on everything, everything mm. that we see around us. And, um, and it, yeah, it's amazing, amazing just to learn so much. I mean, I, my background is, is kind of tech development. Uh, from from basically the very early days of you know websites and just getting stuck into that, developing my own content management system, working in Silicon Roundabout, working with startups. Um, so you know, tech is is in my is definitely in my ballpark, and crypto and Web three are essentially just you know the evolution, the pinnacle of 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 that. You know, especially with kind of. You know, I have a des- strong design background, so it's like the best of both worlds, tech and art all coming together. Um, and as you, as you know, the cycles of the market, you know, from from joyous wonder to despair and then going, no, this is how it's meant to be. You know, forget about, you know, the ups and downs of the market. It's the decentralized well that we're living is not going to die it's going to be born again and it's suddenly new things happen and DeFi comes along and and at that point was i was like right i'm i am diving in head first because not only could i see the absolute chaos of DeFi and just everyone jumping in and kind of like it's just we're like this we can do this better so yeah with a bunch of uh, sort of like minds who, who'd also seen the the horrors and the chaos uh, decided right let's band together let's create um uh, our first venture so what we set out to do and um, we had a team of about five uh, each with specialisms from tech to design to marketing etc we decided to visualize the pillars of defi and okay uh, interesting uh, yeah rather than just everyone going in and just doing dry ass defi defi is hard enough uh, so we're like, well, we know that, you know, gamifying, gamifying things allows for a greater adoption and a greater learning curve, uh, in, expedites the learning curve for anything complex and makes things easier. So why not make it, why not gamify it? Why not visualize it, make it more accessible and try not to befuddle everyone and just literally take the pillars of DeFi from liquidity, liquidity pool staking and stablecoin lending characterize them with character sets and then incentivize the participation through uh, incentivized rewards that can increase through gamifying the characters and and trying to improve their levels through through a series of participation uh, within the dap so, so, so wait, we... wait 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 uh, hold on a second Ooh. are we talking about skyscraper or is this just kind no. of before we, oh. so what we're doing i'll tell you what it is yes or no it is yes or okay no. It is basically the Genesis project of which Skyscraper was born from. Got um, it. Okay. So, so what we created was the Wolves of Wall Street. and The, the Wolves char- of Wall Street. I like it. Correct. So the character sets of Wolves were representing the liquidity pool stakers. And the business boys, their canine counterparts, were the more risk-averse stablecoin lenders. And through those opposing factions, because neither... Uh, is is too fond of the other because you know the stablecoin lenders don't really put into the project. You know they 
take from the project through their risk averseness. And the, the, the wolves are kind of like, well, we're really risking everything. We're putting everything into the project. We're risking our LP positions. And that sets a kind of opposing factions. And that's kind of like what we did there was, you know, brilliant. We created a unique utility, which I'll come to. But we made one little crucial error. And that crucial error was we launched a token uh, called WOWS, but we did a fair launch, which was lovely for the community. But we didn't, we didn't raise enough capital for our treasury that was non, you know, a mm-hmm. non-native token. Uh, so we unfortunately didn't have the longevity with which to power through our vision. Uh, and and, all, and which which uh, blockchain did you launch this on? Was this on uh, Ethereum? We launched this on Mainnet. Yeah, we launched this on okay. Mainnet Ethereum. But yes, from that, this is you know that was launched in 2020. Uh, from that, however, we have born uh, Skyscraper, which has taken those character sets, the Wall Street Walls. And the business boys and we brought them into new york city and obviously i'll talk about skyscraper in more depth yeah yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll get to that is, in a little bit yeah this is our this is this is me and um uh yeah web three <laughs> mm-hmm. well thank you tristan and what about you bard how how did you discover web three so how to follow that <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you guys from by the way um i'm uk london Mm-hmm. And uh, Sweden, yeah, and we oh, have cool. uh, a German as well on the team. And, oh, awesome! Uh, yeah, getting some more people. We're basically uh, Europe, Europe based for now. Oh, right on. So uh, right. we would like to uh, broaden that out, though. It's it's uh, it's such a global space. So it's uh, mm-hmm. I see it as a, a weakness, to be honest, to not have uh, someone in like the US and and maybe in uh, the kind well, of Singapore absolutely. or Australia region as well. I understand what you mean. Honestly, I I love it. And you're totally right. It is a very global space. I mean, believe it or not, you're one of the first Swedes that I've ever spoken to in my life. But I mean, I've spoken to people (laughs) all over the the globe. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I'll continue. Sorry, I I digress. We were talking about you and and how you discovered Web3. Yeah, for sure. So I got got stuck into... uh, Actually, I decided uh, to uh, learn about uh, personal finances to to get a kind of serious uh, when I started a family. So that was actually the basis and trying to just what got me into DeFi, understanding how fucked up. Sorry. No, but so uh, basically learning about how the world works, right? Uh, brought me into DeFi. I actually started, I think, with, with Bitcoin shortly and then quite rapidly into Ethereum and uh, kind of the, yeah, the kind of the ethos and philosophy uh, behind Web3. So joined like Bankless way back, some Web3 communities, did a whole lot of investing and then uh, some smaller DAO projects. Also went into uh, NFTs when quite early and decided that PFPs are dead. So uh, did not did not mint the Basie or Oni because yeah that's just uh, that's that's all over right <laughs> no <laughs> what, what were your what were you guys first NFTs I don't know if it was my first NFT but my first like proper mint was uh, Chubby's okay which was uh, one a uh, very early like March. that's that's the Chubby coins right no these are no these are uh, cute little uh, pixel art. Uh, characters from way back. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know these ones. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, uh, I sorry to jump. I I you know was you know following the Crypto Kitties madness and you know mm. how it slowed down you know the entire Ethereum chain and was just like yeah okay what is going on like that I, have, was, I have a ton of Crypto Kitties. You wow. Do? Yeah. Nice. Um. I was just trying to get my head around it going like, okay, what is going on? It was just, that was my first introduction. I never dived in, but I, th- I would say the first that I actually minted was the ones we created. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, I'm, all, I'm always one of those ones where it's like, God damn it. You know, I'd rather be doing it than, you know, following someone else's thing. That's just me. But yeah, didn't I mean, I've minted a few other ones, you know, from some projects just for the visual side of it. 
but yeah, I look on at the kind of madness of the apes and whatnot. It's it's always fascinating. I like I like NFTs with utility. That's my. I think everybody does. I, I mean, that's that's I think we're really where the benefit. Well, I mean, I definitely have a soft spot for like the gen art and the kind of new age art nfts that mm. exist and i'm very happy that there's a space for that but mm. i'm a, i'm in agreement with you i think that the real power of nfts is the utility and right now a lot of it is kind of analog in that you know we're arbitrarily adding utility to nfts in a real world sense right like mm. you know Yes, on chain, you can have utility in terms of yield farming or yeah. um, they're just generating tokens. But if you want to bring it into the real world, it's kind of have this, uh, it's not quite there yet where it's seamless, you know, where your NFT now becomes your membership card to. Yeah, I mean, like it's, that, you know, yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the kind of like mainstream utility that is just, it's just begging. I mean, it's, it's going to happen so very, very, very soon. But it's always always that thing of adoption and making it essentially hide it essentially with all these things it's hiding the tech hiding it mm -hmm. so, and just giving it something where people just don't even have to think about you know web3 wallets or anything it's just seamless right. and that is when you'll get the yeah it, the mainstream adoption isn't that the thing with all new technology like first you yes. praise the new technology and you just speak about all the cool things that you'll be able to do and then you you bump into these walls and yeah. then when you finally just do it without any, anyone having to even consider what tech is behind it that's when you have your like breakthrough. absolutely Absolutely. Uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's that's where that's where we're heading. You know, this I uh, I think I've said this before on the pod, but this is like the DOS times command line prop. That's where we are. You know, we, we don't even have a GUI yet, so to speak. So uh, yeah, no, we we can do some DOS art, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bard, we interrupted you. Can you were talking about buying chubbies, and then yeah, you know, we went on a yes. tangent. Sure. So, so um, I won't go into too too much, Mike, because I have uh, I have way too many NFTs and, and been <laughs> active in in quite a lot of projects, which actually was a good thing when mm -hmm. joining this team because I, I have a, a lot of connections. So that's that's uh, been fortunate. Oh, great! But but um, yeah, I went. Well, I'm still part of of that scene, but it's it's a it's a minor part of my focus now. So mm -hmm. I joined. I actually uh, was kind of just slid into the treasure space uh, on a banana shell uh, via some AMA for uh, Knights of the Ether. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Like, yeah, I think I, th I think it was kind of the, one of the greed plays, you know, come here and join the AMA, win the knight or something. And then I did. <laughs> and then I started chatting with the community and they were awesome. So, and I started because I studied game, computer game design 20 years ago. And back then, I actually was uh, studying and learning about some now archaic games, but uh, like the first MMOs that had a real economy, uh, where you can. There were actually some games where you could even buy plots of land for for real money, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. Ultima so, Online, I think, for sure, well, right? Yeah, there were there were there were. A a few of them. There was a Swedish one, which I actually forget what it's called, and the company no longer no longer exists. But um, I kind of already had that uh, at the back of my mind, and and having been like a super passionate gamer back back in the day, all of these things just kind of dumped were, were, was dumped into into my brain when I saw what uh, could be done or what what people wanted to do in the treasure space because. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can have um, you can have ambitions, or just it can j just be like empty words. But once I got into deeper into treasure and into more project, I I, I fell in love and decided that uh, this was what I wanted to transition to from being a corporate, a long time corporate, to working in, uh, in Web three. <laughs> that, is that is that a, a Swedish? slang corporate and i've never heard that one before but that's, that's one, kind of that's a good one uh, i like that one isn't it Pop no it's, it's not swedish i can't claim uh, uh. <laughs> inventing it no it's it's actually from a uh a dao i mean called dao punks 
<laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they they basically help people transition from from a corporate to a DAO punk life. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously, we're quite. Uh, I mean, we have tons of DAOs in. I mean, the Treasury is a DAO, and then we have tons of projects that work as DAOs or like halfway there. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we but, just uh, we we basically just started a content sub DAO for Treasure as well. So right, you know, like the, and that's the Magic amazing. Power and the Treasure Times. Yeah. You know, it's, Super I think it's, I, I'm excited about it too. I think it's like necessary to kind of bring all the content together and kind of really focus on the message and, and make sure that everybody's getting it and the, we're speaking with one voice, you know, so the information, whether it's coming from the Magic Hour pod or if it's coming from the Treasure Times is the same message, you know, it's not yeah. like we're uh, overlapping or kind of working against each other. I'm really excited about it. You know, so also, we're, we're getting things started. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. No. I also read uh, the new proposal for Spire, I think it was called, about mm -hmm. the uh, kind of DAO form of narration and developing lore for games and sharing and stuff. That's also really cool. That looked cool, yeah. That looked really cool. Yeah. There's some, uh, yeah. yeah. A lot of good stuff going on. So, so you guys, so Tristan, I don't rem rem recall, how did you discover Treasure and Magic again? So Treasure and Magic was brought to me by the very good friend, Bard of the Ether. Ah, and okay, okay. He was whispering in my ear for literally about eight months, going, you need to check it out, you need to check it out. Come over, come over from Polygon. Really, look, and I'm like, okay, look, hang on, you know, what do we got here? And I, it was just chipping away at me. And then the more I looked at it, the more I realized, like, oh, my God that's where we need to be like we'd moved from mainnet to polygon mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as it was well mainnet was just getting ridiculous you know again yes fees, yeah for sure this was just too much you know uh so that was a logical step and you know polygon just you know welcomed us and was super cool and um, but the thing that polygon was lacking was that ecosystem within an ecosystem and and that's kind of like what treasure dao is within mm -hmm. our room. you know it's it's a it's a it's a pretty unique ecosystem of hardcore gamers that are all there supporting everyone and games supporting other games and it's like it's a great it's almost you know like a web3 game incubator but without mm -hmm. any of the kind of like gump that just you know prevents people from easily accessing it um, right. and it's right. you know, it's a really um fertile ground with which to develop and grow and you know for us you know that just by just i just knew it was right and you know baradif was absolutely spot on um and yeah that was that was it really you know and, and we we kind of just dived head first and yeah launching everything within Treasure Dow as, you know, as the potential partner and cartridge game that we will uh, build to be. So, All right. Well, so we, we're, we're about to talk about Skyscraper game. You said that kind of the genesis of it was this Wolves of Wall Street kind of characterization yeah. of DeFi, if you will. Yeah. That, you know, what, uh, why don't you uh, tell me, I guess, what's the main objective or how are um how are the players going to play or interact yeah, with this smart absolutely. contract and we'll go from there yeah absolutely so so yeah we we've brought over two character sets which are the wall street wolves and the business boys and we've set them out uh with two other character sets which are the uh, mafia cats and mob rats and they are going to compete in a strategic territorial 3d nft verse play and earn game called skyscraper which is set in new york city in 1987 and they their aim is to essentially take over districts by buying and competing for land by developing that land in order to mint resources uh, with which fuel all of the characters and uh, also provide the key weapons of the DeFi uh, deck battlers that will be forming the raid and defense uh, 
part of the competition within the uh, New York City. So even if you buy land and you develop it, you can be raided. Um, you mm -hmm. can be raided for your resources. Your uh, land can be taken over if you haven't developed it to a certain point. Uh, so it's you're never safe. You're going to need to work in clans. You're going to need to work in your factions. You may even need to double cross your factions in order to, uh, you know, seek out a common goal. And essentially, mm -hmm. you need to take over the districts. You know, there's 31 districts in Manhattan, and right. um, whilst you will have your headquarters and mm -hmm. your home districts, you can't rest on your laurels. You know, you you have to develop, and and all of this is really held together through the the mission for Dow governance of of Manhattan and New York City as a whole. Because mm -hmm. not only will we have our DAO token, but we will also be giving voting weight to the in-game assets that a character holds. So those will be given a voting weight as well. So in turn, really trying to benefit the players so that they have a say within the game, how it develops and voting mechanisms that isn't just purely reliant on a, you know, a token itself. So, right. uh, yeah, that is that is that in a nutshell. That in a nutshell. So we're so the as a player, I can choose which faction to be a part of. Can I be a yeah. part of all factions? So, well, there you go. Straight away, you're you're looking to play each side, right? <laughs> so, well, so, I'm, I'm just curious. I, no, I mean, yes, I you yes, you I'm can. not a game designer, but I'm a game player, right? Yeah, so I. I'm trying to like understand the mechanics of it. Is it is it one continuous ongoing game or is it more like a season style where like we jockey for yeah, land so grabs and then you know someone's going to get all of the land and then that's it for that that particular game and it all resets and we start anew. No, it's going to be a continuous battle oh, okay. between good and evil, you know, the 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 factions will be looking to develop now just developing land you know the different factions have different goals and um, so on that side of things you know you can swing a district between essentially doing good or doing evil so you know mob rats could be setting up illegal gun stores could be setting up all kind of nefarious things then are going to drag a district down into where they want to drag it business boys could be trying to you know set up legitimate business set up legitimate districts that are that are swinging it into the good and that's going to be represented visually through sort of the visual artifacts uh, that surround the kind of buildings and the state of the district itself so there's going to be a visual element as well whilst not being a fully immersive you know first person environment it's going to be a 2d strategic with a 3D zoom balls, you know, rotational uh, mm -hmm. New York City where you can zoom right into detail and you'll get a kind of like, a, you know, the look and feel of how districts are developing. So, but yeah, your point of can I have play, you know, have different characters? Yes, you can. You know, you absolutely will be able to um, sign in as, as you know, opposing team. You can even have within a clan, you know, business boys in cahoots with mob rats because there's going to be certain gameplay functions where mob rats can't do certain things and going to need to cooperate and uh well there's of, no honor among thieves right correct this is it and even the you know the lickety spit business boys that are kind of like goody two shoes don't kid yourself you know they're, they're doing some business deals that are shady as hell so that's the idea is like you realize nothing's black and white everyone's out for themselves whilst they may have good intentions you know they're never too far away from the murky side <laughs> in terms of your question uh, as to whether it's like a persistent world or if there's like seasons or stuff so we uh, it is persistent and and we uh, think or we aim to to make it more like a game where uh, it it moves the battlefronts move back and forth. So obviously the each faction has their uh, headquarter district, or in mm -hmm. some cases districts if they are very small. Uh, but uh, apart from those, the the tides will move back and forth, and there will be 
uh, dynamic uh, interest to maybe sometimes claim more land or sometimes defend more land or to raid into enemy, enemy territory. There be so we, we, we want to motivate players to create a really dynamic and uh, world that feels alive. Right. And and you don't want a, one faction to almost dominate the space. So you would probably no, for sure. devise other uh, bonuses to the, I guess, losing factions yeah. in some of Correct. those different regions yeah. in order uh, to prevent that from happening. I got you. When we, when we discuss these, th- these things, I often go back to uh, an old school MMO called Dark Age of Camelot, which had uh, oh. Realm versus Realm three factions. I and love were... that one. That was so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome, yeah. And they, they had strong dynamics that created where you would like raid into the enemy territory. It was easier to attack than to defend, and you got benefits from uh, moving around, basically. So, right. And there were things to do uh, in, a, in a giant guild or maybe even a, like a cross-server uh, right. collab. Uh, or most mostly temporary ones, but there was always stuff, uh, also stuff to do. If you were like three or four people, you could go take over a tower, yeah. create a small siege, go just uh, raiding some, uh, looking for. You just brought small... me back. I I, I remember <laughs> like because that that one was after EverQuest, but I think it was before World of yeah. Warcraft and yeah, just before yeah, yeah. And I remember some of those like. PVP battles were really, really fun and exciting. And I remember, I think I was like a mercenary. And I remember like hiding behind a tree and like ambushing like a bunch of people, walk, a bunch of players walking by, like right at like that uh, kind of like the border where all the fighting took place, kind of the siege areas. Yeah, 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 yeah. The front, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The I remember. Frontier. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for bringing that back. To me. Yeah, I <laughs> love that. I game love is that still experience. alive. It's still that's, alive that's and amazing. it's still looks kind of the same way but the thing that it has is just this sweet sweet dynamic gameplay that mm-hmm. still works it's still That's fun great. <laughs> i'm gonna look at yeah. that later <laughs> so how big is your team and how are you guys dividing the roles yeah so we have uh let's see we kind of got it's kind of like we've got a core team and then we've got a satellite team um, and then we've got outsourced teams. So it's, you know, there's, there's a kind of like a constellation of us. Um, core teams, there are currently three. So we've got a CTO, COO and CEO, myself. And our CTO is, is a bit of a genius. He's a kind of, 90 million software as a service founder he's been in web3 for about three years and yeah just firing on all cylinders and he yeah he's he does all our solidity and 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 whatnot and we've got two kind of satellite members who are kind of solidity security and um, marketing and um, we are sort of on the verge of acquiring another core member but i can't speak more on that but they will hopefully uh, join us and, and it, they will be an absolute powerhouse uh, for us. So that we're looking forward to that. Um, so that's us. And yeah, and really the goal is, I think like with all teams is to, you know, acquire more specialisms and get more stuff in house. So we have mm-hmm. a obviously, marketing outsource team and we mm-hmm. have a uh, game development studio as well that we're working with on the kind of game side of things and um, you know anything that's not solidity and whatnot so yeah that's kind of us that's that's great i love how you divide that too and and also that's one of the really great things about the treasure community too you have a whole lot of resources available to you if you're not a big yeah. game studio or you know you might be really strong in one area but you know, maybe you need some assistance with finance or marketing or something like that. You know, the yeah. Treasure DAO has resources for those sorts of things. So that's another bonus to working within this community. But clearly, you guys have all that covered. And so, one such item is that we had uh, uh, Nadimis from Small Radio mm-hmm, mm-hmm. host us for a show. And then uh, we were so impressed that we uh, hired him to 
to make uh, narration and uh, and stuff for the project and it's it's it's, it's so awesome <laughs> oh yeah, that cool. is awesome that is yeah, awesome really cool. I, i'd have to i need to hang out with him and uh ha- do some he's, small radio with him yeah he's a very cool guy and the stuff he just puts out is just uh it's it's really fits us it fits our kind of law it fits what we're doing and it provides us that real color that we need and um, so yeah it's awesome we, we actually haven't released any 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 stuff yet but we are definitely going to be releasing very very soon some mm-hmm. very cool oh, good that's that's kind of where i wanted to get to too I'm, I'm glad you brought that up where are you guys in the development cycle currently yeah so where we're at is we've we've brought over uh, you know we've got a big leg up in that we've brought over our solidity character sets from mm-hmm. uh genesis project so we've got those i mean that's all that that's actually containing our unique utility which um, i can speak about now as well which is um uh, the ability for characters to actually earn and hold their own nft assets and fungible rewards literally hold them in a decentralized manner so that they can be you know played with they can be you know go through a whole play cycle of earning creating game streaks earning awards all these good things that a game character should do um, and they can be traded as one nft so you could have 50 nfts that, that character could hold 50 nfts could hold you know land buildings awards etc etc fungible awards usdc can can have anything really mm-hmm. uh, and it can be traded as one nft so for another player to come along that high value character can be bought and that it can be brought into the dap and you know unlock and all those assets can be essentially moved into other characters or uh, sold off or kept or whatever you know so that utility is going to be super cool in skyscraper um, and and we're also going to use that utility in our land plots so the land plots contain our building units and um that's going to that's in, in a mechanism that allows uh, essentially them to be locked to the land so they won't be able to be moved unlike in the character sets uh, because you know you can't start moving you know a skyscraper around if you want to do something different i.e. take over you know that land and build your own vision you have to destroy it in a demolition and then you know start again but yeah that mm-hmm. unique ability is is already there we've ordered to it so that's that's fantastic and um, what Great. we're doing now is is we're essentially building out um manhattan so we've mm-hmm. we've mapped out manhattan we've mapped out our land plots so we're dividing all our districts into land plots 15 different land plots uh 10 different district types all of these have a emissions ratio a kind of uh, a rewards ratio they you know they basically they're different benefits what you can build on them etc etc so that is going to start forming our uh, first pre-sale so the first pre-sale that we're doing which is is first one up and coming no date given yet will be a a small selection uh from 11 chosen districts all across manhattan uh giving you a huge variety of some of the best and some of the worst plots available in manhattan for a set fee mm-hmm. uh, it's just going to be 0.05 eth and um yeah that's going to be our first pre-sale and and the the land plot sale is going to be divided into two pre-sales and we won't okay. talk too much about the second one but yeah there's going to be a specific reason why we've done that but yeah that's that's what's up and coming and um from there on in there's going to be probably three or four other pre-sales of nft assets very small limited runs mm mm-hmm. And yeah, that's going to take us into, you know, Q2 of next year, where we're okay. yeah, hopefully going to be, uh, be able to launch our MVP probably sort of mid Q3, I would say. Okay. So we're about a year out, basically, is what, what I'm hearing. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we are in November. I'm always ahead of myself. I would say the summer of, you know, the summer of 23 is, is where I'm, I'm, I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what we're aiming for. Yeah. And then uh, these, uh, like the land eat sales and also the character sales later, will uh, be used as well to 
in our kind of out of game gameplay that we're doing. So we we have this concept of uh, turf wars, which mm-hmm. is a giant thing. Of course, in game, it's kind of our like realm versus realm part of, of it. But we are also going to do uh, that uh, in Discord and uh, in other ways. So we want to have these uh, the land deeds first and the factions tied to them so that people can identify uh, with their factions, join clans, and then start battling to get, gain assets as well that will mm-hmm. uh, move into the game once we launch. Right on. And, and this is mostly going to be like... Um deck builder style battles or uh... yeah so that exactly so the the kind of macro uh, there's like a macro and a micro element mm-hmm. to it so there's like a base management or city builder macro level perspective and the buildings produce resources which are basically like the the cards the trading cards that you use in deck battler which mm-hmm. would be the micro uh, gameplay where you attack alone or together uh, other buildings to try to take over their their turf and their resources. So either to raid them or to actually take over their turf to expand your empire. And then you could also request help from your clan members or from like mercenaries. So there will be like this like a multiplayer element to it. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. just single player. No, that, that sounds fun. I, I like that a lot. I've been recently playing Marvel Snap, so it's like in my brain, and they have, they kind of have a, uh, it's a, it's a card game style mobile game. But what's, what I guess the parallel that I'm drawing to your game is that you, there are three different, I guess, terrains or lands, if you will, that you're battling over, th- lanes, and you know you have to get the most points in that lane to win. And each of those lanes have different like um, benefits or uh, negatives, depending on which ones they are, because they're all random. But I was just thinking about similar, similar to what you guys are talking about. Mm-hmm. Sounds really interesting. When I own wolves or boys or mafia cats or mob rats, I'm able to take over any land, or is it just going to be um, kind of limited to what's available? And do I want it? Like, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to ask is. What's the most, I guess, ideal asset to own? Is it the land or is it one of these characters? I Which guess will depend on your game style, I think, your play style, because we do want to engage different types of players with different amounts of time as well. Mm-hmm. So there will be a variant of people focusing more on kind of the, almost like the DeFi side of it, where they basically buy plots, build buildings, and then maybe have enough to defend but or even just hire mercenaries to defend their buildings and then just sell the resources and then you will have other players uh, maybe of some factions like the mob rats who who uh, will favor a much more active and kind of battling uh, play style and there you would look look to have like a strong character with strong uh, st- traits and mm-hmm. then and that fits your play style and then like build enough buildings to produce resources so that you can continuously uh, be out in the field and be active, I would say. Yeah, and I think, I think also on, on top of that, the, you're going to get you know, clans that are going to very much be driven for certain things. So you know, clans within factions that are just have their own, um, their own branding, their own just MO uh, within, within uh, NYC and you know they're going to get reputation for a certain things they're going to they you know they could be just looking out for trouble they could be looking to actually profit from just pure DeFi elements because there'll be investment elements within the game like we, we started out with Wolves of Wall Street and there's also going to be other players that they're you know going to be just doing the solo missions you know we want there to be quite a strong solo gameplay where you can uh, participate in faction specific missions improve your characters you know earn uh, rewards that way participate in scavenger hunts uh, so yeah we want to we want to provide definitely a, a variety of gameplay options 
there's, uh, there, there's definitely an element of kind of EVE, EVE Online large-scale gameplay as well where you would have some people act as kind of miners producing mm-hmm. resources because I think that if you have, I mean, the bigger clans, not everyone will want to do everything or or like it won't be maybe the optimal way. Maybe you will have some feeders who produce and then other people out battling and you probably don't want to build your most expensive buildings out in the frontier, right? Where the front where the battlefront moves back and forth. You will have that more in the in your back line. And then uh shuffle those resources to the people who are out fighting. Or at least that's what I how I envision it. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. So th- there's gonna there's gonna be some level of collaboration involved if you want it be or you can just be a solo player if you want. And how are you guys going to incorporate magic or do you have plans to incorporate magic? Have you kind of discussed this? You know, what's because I mean, I think I feel like that's one of the key facets of this community that I I like the most is that there's one token, one main token that everybody uses, which creates this kind of uh, ability to go between different verses or metaverses, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we definitely we're definitely incorporating both magic and treasures. So uh, we want there to be gameplay features where perhaps the emissions of uh, your building can be improved with incorporating treasures in it, or you could be you know awarded with magic by participating in scavenger hunts through some of the you know single player roles, the the, the missions. Those are all going to be opportunities to create, you know, sinks for for magic, and I think that's an important part. Like you said, of the ecosystem, you know, we want we want that very much so. And I think also with our partner projects, you know, we've partnered up with uh, Knights of the Ether, so we're in in some really decent talks about incorporating their in-game assets. Uh, I believe is it trinkets they they. You know, those can be transferred. Mm, mm-hmm. Their character sets could be transferred over. You can create, you know, perhaps we were looking at as well as sort of pairing some of our key partner projects with a specific faction. And whilst we want everyone to have a kind of free will, we do quite mm-hmm. like the idea of sort of matching a partner with a faction. You know, right. The night the- the- yeah, that that means there's choice, right? You know, you yeah. want yeah, there's opportunity costs. Yeah, of course. So, so we're definitely uh, yeah. looking at um, having our sales in in magic as well. Mm-hmm. So because it's it it just makes sense to have the, it's like what fuels the the whole ecosystem, right? And like mm-hmm. with treasures, for example, we're looking at uh, staking them in our buildings to increase the rate of of yield of, of the resources you get. Or maybe mm-hmm. in some cases you would burn them. I don't know. We'll see what makes the most sense. I mean, the treasure space is, is evolving all the time as well. So we'll, we'll yeah. see. We'll, we'll have to follow what, what happens in Bridge World, for example. Mm-hmm. And then we have the City Fund as well, mm-hmm. right, Tristan? Which will probably uh, provide uh, magic on top of our own turf uh, token. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we can get that, that will be part of... Uh... Yeah, part of the rewards that we can, you know, City Hall is going to be uh, incentivizing uh, development and whatnot. So, yeah, we'll be able to um, provide magic in that for sure. Yeah, we're definitely hoping to make kind of like dual face NFTs that have one function in our game and that can interact with other games uh, in a different way. Um, But that's so that's something that we've we're in talks with some of the other teams about what what mm-hmm. that could be. Uh, so not only have like to generate a new. Sometimes you want to gen- maybe generate something new, cool, like uh, Life Tower, for example, is doing their Soul Knight in in uh, Knights of the Ether, which is awesome, and some some cards. And then some other times you can uh, kind of integrate uh, existing assets, right? Yeah. And, uh, well, like, so, that's the best part of that's the other amazing thing about web3 it's so easy to incorporate yeah. other assets from other projects yeah it's you awesome. don't even have to you don't even have to know 
what they built except for, you know, maybe a couple lines of code or understanding what their functions are at the contract level. And then you can bring it in and make it a part of yours as well and interact with it in that way. I love exactly. That. You can can you kind of need to understand kind of the the tokenomic function mm -hmm. of uh, an asset as well in their chain, so it so it kind of matches yours, or maybe it enhances theirs, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you want to tweak something, and maybe it doesn't make sense to tweak it uh, in your game. So, like treasure, for example, it can be tweaked by other projects integrating treasures instead mm -hmm. of just like reducing supply or something else or the function in bridge world for example why 1987 new york just yeah. out of curiosity why 1987 1987 is a pivotal time you know um obviously the 80s uh a real coming together of kind of greed poverty culture art you know music and New York City was a melting pot of all of that. And 1987 actually was, you know, the time, um, I believe in sort of late October, where Wall Street had its massive crash as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, you got, you know, Wall Street on the brink, they don't know it yet. Uh, so it's a real on the edge uh, time for- Like a powder you know, keg. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Uh, and yeah, we just see that as just a super rich environment to um, create what we're doing here. We right want to have tons of flavor and humor in the game and to really get that with some sweet, sweet narration, music, and uh, just all of these, uh, th that setting just popped, right? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I know we talk about, you, you, you have all these different kind of nefarious characters, but is there an authority like are there police or is this going to be part of like the game like the police are going to raid your your hideouts or something yeah. like that and you're going to have yeah. to react to that yeah it's funny i was i've, I've, I've been and i haven't even spoken to Bart about it but i've been mulling about that i'm not going to rule it out there currently isn't mm -hmm. and that is all i'm going to say <laughs> but i you know That's i do fair. Love I I love that idea as well. You know, it's like, that's the thing is, is there's going to be an evolution. So absolutely, mm -hmm. we're going to introduce and develop as we go. Um, and as we launch and, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be lots of fun stuff. That, that also, we're, we're, we're having uh, like a free to play burrow because we want to uh, get new players into the space. Mm -hmm. And so they'll obviously not have the same benefits as the the uh players that that come in with funds and uh but we want to like show them show them good time and get them into the space and then we're also planning to have like probably the recruits from bridge world although we'll see what makes sense because bridge world is as i just said before evolving quite a lot so we'll see what makes sense and maybe right. like small small brands and walls for example it would make Yo, sense to also have them that's a good idea though with the recruit the recruit i i you just you just kind of like made me think of something like what if the recruit was like your your ability to demo these games right yeah i don't want to die i don't know what i've never played toadstool so i don't i don't know if i want to dive into it but if i had an opportunity to demo it then maybe I'd be like oh this is for me or maybe it's not you know like you might be on yeah, so something there bard yeah so we're thinking like the recruit could be like if you're into the magic space at all, it's like an almost free way to have a more than free to play experience of the game. So you would be able to experience like a light version of the full game, right? For basically free. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. As maybe yeah. some kind of mercenary or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or they could be the one calling the cops. <laughs> yeah. And also, as to regarding the cops, and maybe I shouldn't say too much if you have. No, don't fun, say fun too much. To we can always them, we but... can always edit it out if you want <laughs> us to. But we we are planning uh, if if all if all goes well, we are planning to to uh, adding uh, on adding boroughs and hopefully uh, other cities as well in the future. Mm -hmm. 
So obviously oh, like, we wouldn't like have Chicago to have this thing. and Miami, maybe, and yeah, yeah or like maybe that. on the other yeah, side of the yeah. pond. Yeah. We oh, thinking, okay. So like London. Tokyo. Yeah, we were thinking definitely in Southeast Asia, Tokyo. Okay. Because uh, okay. the fun you can have there, you know, the yakuza, you can have. Yeah. Then you'll have intercity competition and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know factions going over and trying their luck in different cities and. And then each city will have its different perks and flavors and, you know, different opportunities. And you can really build up a real, a really uh, diverse um, kind of NFT verse. Yeah. So yeah. that's definitely on our roadmap. Awesome. Well, this sounds like a very interesting project. And we're going to follow you guys uh, pretty well. Your Discord is open, right? Uh, yeah. People can go in, start Causing chatting me. around. Yeah. I know you guys yeah. have had a couple of AMAs so far, um, but you know, as is the case in Web three, uh, join the Discord, get involved, mm-hmm. you know, and and be a part of the community, and you know, good things will happen to those who yeah. are, are active community members, right? That's it. I mean, we got we got whitelist spots opening up. If you get onto the whitelist, you get to choose your faction within Discord. Once we mm-hmm. get Actions built up. We're going to start doing the turf wars within Discord. You can earn stake. So it's our in Discord token. Uh, stake is going to have real value uh, within our game. So mm-hmm. everything earned within Discord is going to have um, possibilities within the actual game itself. Uh, we also have a shop within Discord. So you can spend that stake and purchase some assets. Again, that will be valuable within the game. And also, you know, attending our AMAs. Am I allowed to say anything about the thing that begins with P? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But let's say that we are fairly generous in our uh, yeah in our AMAs and, and in other broadcasts. Okay. Well, and there will be more broadcasts coming up. We're 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 deciding on some dates with uh, Life Now and uh, Tales of Valeria, for example. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Well. Uh, if you guys ever need a moderator for your AMAs, I'm happy to to lend my voice. Yeah. But certainly, you know, good luck with everything. I I hope to see uh see what comes of this. You know, obviously there's still a lot of time to develop, so th- that's good, and I'm sure you guys have a, a good plan ahead of you. But this was a lot of fun. Um, Thank you. I enjoyed chatting with you guys. Yeah. Like any final thoughts before we uh, call it? No, I mean, just, yeah, jump into our Discord. You know, we've got this upcoming pre-sale. We're looking uh, to fill our whitelist spots and we're incentivizing the, you know, the Discord interaction. And so, yeah, jump in, get involved and, uh, yeah, look out for more AMAs uh, from ourselves. Yeah, come join the rats uh, from uh, Tales of Valeria or the boys from the Knights of the Ether or maybe uh, set up your own. I, th- I think that the wolves are open for for uh, they're you looking know, for customers. Funny, you know, what's really funny is that I, that just on that note, the wolves have yet to to be uh, kind of uh, adopted yet. And oh. in the wolves of Wall Street, they were like they were like hot the hottest ticket. Everyone wanted to be a wolf. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's really interesting. It's kind of like oh, okay, okay. So we've got you know different. Which is great because it just adds more balance and whatnot. So um, yeah, we're 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 looking out to see who's going to adopt the walls and whatnot. So it's all good, everything to play for. Cool. Yeah. So uh, lastly, maybe uh, for our AMAs, we we have uh, in the past and and uh, are looking to be uh, generous in handing out Genesis NFT. So basically, the characters from the uh, existing, soon to be legacy DAP. Uh, will act as Genesis NFTs and uh, really strong characters in in the in skyscraper dot game. So look to win one of those or or get one of the your favorite marketplace. Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Breaker. This was awesome, and uh, would love to have you as a host sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And anytime. Let me know. Um, obviously, time zone appropriate if I can make it. But yeah, I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely look to collab. I I always want to collab with people in the space, especially in the treasure ecosystem. So That's awesome. definitely reach out if you guys need some assistance. Um, but thanks again, guys. Wonderful Thank time. You. Tristan Ader and Bart of the Ether from Skyscraper Game. 
check it out. Of course, the Discord and the Twitter links will be in the show notes on this pod. So um, thanks again, guys. Thank and have a wonderful day. Yeah, you too, man. Take it easy. Cheers, man. Mm-hmm. Cheers. That concludes another episode of Magic Hour, friends. If you like what you hear, please like and subscribe to our YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you can listen to your podcasts. You can also follow us on Twitter at Magic Hour Pod. All the links are found on our link tree, which is in the show notes. From all of us, we appreciate your support for Bridge World. Bridge World.